name the first one. Uh, you can do this a number of ways. What, however you feel most comfortable. I usually like to name from the line, bond line drawing. Uh, but if you like naming from this, it, it really doesn't matter. But if you want to draw this as a bond line, there's a carbon that has two carbons connected to it. So you got two carbons connected to this one. Uh, and then you got a CH2. Then you got a carbon connected to two methyls. So you got a carbon with two methyls. Then you got another three carbons, one, two, three, uh, and then a methyl. So that's the condensed drawn as a bond line. And now uh, I'm going to name it. So I need to find the longest chain. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that has to be an octane. Um, let's see what else. Oh, the branches. I'll circle the branches in a different color. There's my three branches. They're all methyl, so that would be a trimethyl. Uh, and the last thing I want to do is get the number straight so I can put it in my template. So if I number the one on the left-hand side, that will give me the lowest numbers. So there will be two, four, four. So the full name would be 2-4-4-trimethyl-octane. Uh, and if you have bad handwriting, you want to be extremely careful on the exam to print nicely and neatly so the TA can read what you're writing. Okay, let's try the next one. Here I put it as the name, and you're going to go backwards uh, and draw it. So if you're doing this, I'd start with the main chain, non name so, two, four, six, eight, nine. So there's nine for the non name. On the fourth position, there's a T butyl. One, two, three, four. T butyl is one of those special branches to learn besides methyl, ethyl, propyl, like those. T butyl looks like that, looks like a little T, but there are special ones isopropyl to learn. Okay, and then at three, five, and six are three ethyls. So one, two, three. There's an ethyl. Um, four, five, there's an ethyl. And six, there's an ethyl. And that's the structure. So it's actually a little easier, if you get used to it, to go from the name backwards. All right, let's try the next one. Uh, I tried to make it look as crazy as possible. So there is a carbon. That carbon has four things on it. Those four things are each a carbon with three other carbons on it. So first, let me draw this. Let me draw this one right there that I just underlined. The carbon with the three carbons on it. So it'd have an attachment point, and then there'd be a carbon with three carbons on it. What's that called? That's a T-butyl. So this carbon with three carbons on it is a T-butyl. So, there are four of these T-butyls attached to a center carbon. So here's the center carbon. I want to draw four T-butyls. Okay? Is that a beautiful little snowflake? So I thought of that last night. I had to add it. Okay, and then we'll do the final one here. Oh, yeah, I, I, forgot, I forgot to name it. I got so excited about drawing our snowflake. Okay, let's name it. What's the longest chain? I'll let you think about this one for a second. You should see five. One, two, three, four, five. So that's a pentane. Uh, and then let's circle the substituents. I'll circle them in red. There's one here, one here, and four here. So the middle ones are both T-butyls. And these ones on kind of the edges are methyls. So there's uh, two T-butyls. So that'd be di, uh, 
And there's two ways you could have done it. On my exam, I'm not going to care. I think technically you would put parentheses. But if you didn't put parentheses, that's fine. And then there's one, two, three, four. So that's a tetramethyl. Tetramethyl. The other thing we want to figure out is the numbers. It's not really going to matter because it's totally symmetric. So whatever side to count from won't matter. But the both of the T butyls are on the third position. So it'll be a 3, 3. And the tetramethyls, we'll use different colors, so it's easier to see. Tetramethyls are on the 1, 2, 3, 4. So 2, 2, 4, 4 for the tetramethyl. Now I'm going to put all that together. Um, for the T-butyl, uh, you count, and I'll underline in black, the B in alphabetical order. So the T in the T-butyl doesn't count for the alphabet. Um, and then M for methyl. So the butyl is actually going to come first. Uh, so it'd be 3, comma, 3, uh, dash, di, T-butyl. Dash, uh, and then it's 2, comma, 2, comma, 4, comma, 4, tetramethyl. And then pentane. So 3, 3, dibutyl, 2, 2, 4, 4, tetramethyl pentane. And then for the last one, uh, again, we're given a, a name and we're going to draw it. So it says, when you're given the name, start with the base name, which is, you can read it as cyclohexane. So it's 2,2-diethyl-1,3,5,5-tetramethyl-cyclohexane. So for the cyclohexane, there's cyclohexane. Uh, and then you just have to figure out some position for the... Uh, one. So I'll, I'll just put it in red. Or maybe black would be easier to see. So just when you're doing it this way, you can randomly assign the It doesn't matter because you're going to put the numbers according to what the name says. So uh, there's 1355 uh, tetramethyl. So 1. Uh, to 3, 5, 5, <coughs> tetramethyl, and then uh, 2, 2, diethyl. There we go. And we got it. Put a little smiley face in the middle, and you were done. Okay? You and your friend, of course, can make all kinds of structures and try to name them. Any questions?